Warm good morning to all. We are on the third day of year CS 2021. In this session, there are two talks. We have with us Professor Jiang Ping Zi, Dean's Chair, Associate Professor, Department of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering, National University of Singapore. He received his PhD and MS from National University of Singapore. Master and Bachelor degree in Chemical Engineering from Tsinghua University, China. He was a highly cited researcher of chemistry in 2018 and 2019, and a fellow of Royal Society of Chemistry 2019. He received a number of awards, which includes Faculty of Engineering and Research Award, National University of Singapore in 2016, Faculty of Engineering Teaching Honors List, Faculty of Engineering Teaching Commendation List, National University of Singapore. He has more than 60 publications with a career rich index 80 and item index 182. His research area include noble metal nanoclusters, nanomedicine, nanobiotechnology, energy and environment. With this brief introduction, I invite Professor Jianping Zi to deliver the talk on total synthesis of metallic molecule. Over to you, Professor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair, for the very nice introduction. So very good morning. So thank you for coming like, in a Sunday morning. So I think I will share my screen first. Can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, so for, first of all, I'd like to thank the, uh, the organizer, especially Professor Pradeep for Khan's invitations and bring me here and let me have this opportunity to discuss some of our recent research on the total synthesis of these metallic molecules or metal clusters. So I'm particularly very excited to be here and feel a, a very great honor to be together with uh, three of my mentors and like the pioneer in metal cluster, Professor the Wettens, Professor Sukuda, and Professor pra pra Pradeep. So over the past 10 years, so they gave me all their guidance and also like the encouragement and that is the driving force for me to working on these particular topics. So actually, uh, today my talk will be, I, I see most of the audience are the young students or postdocs. So I think I will slow down my discussion and just like to like dis discuss some of our thoughts in this particular topic and also like the motivations. And I may not discuss the detailed technical sections for the topics I will cover. Okay, so it's a more like a big pictures. So, so the ma ma materials I will discuss today is the metal clusters. So this is the molecules. So orange is the metal actins like gold and silver, and yellow is organic molecules like the tyler ligands. So we can design a different type of organic molecules to make like our cluster hydrophobic or hydrophilic. So for my applications, so my target application are biomedical applications. So let me see. That's the problem. Sorry. So I cannot see. Okay. So my the uh, target applications is the biomedical applications. So the cluster I will discuss today are all the water soluble metal clusters. So it's the ligands that we are using are hydrophilic tyler ligands. So these molecules is very small. So it's about one nanometer. So we know their molecular formulas and they can be used in many applications like the biomedical applications or in catalysis. So if you want to realize their intended applications, so we may need to like synthesize these materials with atomic level control of the size composition, surface, and structure. And to realize their precise like synthetic chemistry, so we need to understand 
and unravel the reaction pathways. So this is the topic I will discuss is the total synthesis of metallic molecules. So to total synthesis is not a new concept. So actually the inspirations for the total synthesis of metallic molecules, it comes from the success of the total synthesis of the organic molecules. So through the use of these four elements, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, so a universe of the organic and biomolecules, like the small molecules, like the drugs, and the big molecules like polymer, or complicated molecules like DNA or proteins and have been created. So an extensive, like the understanding of the structure properties has led to the customize and optimize the synthesis of these the organic and biomolecules with desired properties. So if you see the, our purity table, metals are totally different. So most of these metal materials are in crystalline structure. So they're lacking of this, we call a molecule-like structure diversity. So actually my dream or my research interest in the past 10 years is to use the like, common metal elements like gold and silver and to create a universe of these the highly tunable metallic molecules. So these molecules, they have like molecular pop, uh, uh, structure, mo mo molecular formula, and more importantly, they have some molecular properties and that we can use and for certain applications. So what are the properties of these metanol clusters or met, uh, me, me, metallic molecules? So I will discuss in these slides. So metal materials have this you call a size dependent properties. For example, they are optical properties. So if you take a goal as an example, so the bulk goal is yellow, but when we decrease the size of this, uh, the gold materials, so we start to see the different gold solutions. So we can see the red gold solution, like the blue gold solution, or even the black gold solutions. So this is from the aggregations of thousands of gold atoms, or even more gold atoms. So it has this, we call a continuous electronic states and shows very interesting surface plasma resonance properties. And as a materials chemist, so if you can control a shape size composition, we can then control the optical properties. So if you still remember our high school chemistry, so you know the single go atoms, it has the discrete electronic states. So the next questions we may ask is, so what will be the transition between a single go atoms, the discrete electronic states, to these thousands of the go atoms, continuous electronic states. So the transition is the materials we will discuss today is the aggregation of a certain uh, metal uh, go atoms. So the size is, is very small, about one nanometer. So we call it metal nanoclusters. So it has a discrete electronic states. And different from their larger brother, they don't have these interesting SPR properties but they do show some of these molecular-like properties. For example, they show some of the fluorescence properties and these are our samples. So under the UV light, they can show the different fluorescence properties. And they also have some very unique optical absorption and cause for the cluster. Most of the atoms, if they are removed at ligands, most of the atoms are on the surface of this cluster. So they may also have a very unique catalytic properties. So we can also control the size composition surface structure to control the properties of these clusters. So today I will discuss the, 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 the synthesis of the clusters. So before I discuss the synthesis, so let me first try to discuss the properties. So one of the properties of cluster and difference from like gold nanoparticles is their optical properties. So if you can control the, I cannot see my laser pointer. If you can control like the core of the metanol cluster and ligand of the metanol cluster, we can then control the interaction of these very small molecules together with, with uh, light. So cluster, they can show a very unique optical absorption. They can also show some of these fluorescence properties. So you can use the fluorescence properties for the different applications. For example, 
to continue. Sorry, it's important. For example, they can be used for like bioimaging application, biosensing applications. So if you combine the catalysis properties of metals and with their optical properties, so we can also use the cluster to for photocatalysis applications. So one of the, like, the optical properties of the cluster is the uh, fluorescence. So if we check these molecules, so actually the, besides the core, so the ligands also plays a very important role for the luminescence properties of metanol cluster, especially for these ligand protected metanol clusters. So on the surface of this cluster, at least like gold one or silver uh, tile complexes. So this could be one like pathways for the luminescence uh, of these like tile protected metanol clusters. So se several years ago, we have I observed a very interesting phenomenon. So this called an aggregation induced emission in this gold one tile complexes. So this is not the new uh, phenomenon. So a AIE properties has been well established in a few of these organic molecules. So it was first like coined by Professor Ben Zhong Tang from Hong Kong. So we observed for the like, gold one tile complexes, actually also have this uh, aggregation induced emission properties. So it's, it, it's very simple from these words. So when they aggregate uh, these gold one tile complexes, so they can show a very strong emissions and this emission is reversible. So for example, if it dissociate this aggregates, so that emissions may disappear. So we can show in this video. So if we spray the water on the solid of this gold one tile complexes, so it disappear, the luminescence disappear because it dissociate. So we spray the back solvent, external, so we can generate the aggregation of this gold one tile complexes and then the luminescence will come back again. So it's if you spray uh, ethanol and then luminescence come back, spray the water, luminescence disappear. So it's we think these go one tele complexes and may contribute uh, to the luminescence of methanol clusters. So if you can conjugate the go one tele complexes on a small cluster, they can show the difference emissions. And if you can aggregate this uh, gold nanocluster, they can further enhance their emissions. So we can also use the different uh, size of the cluster and go one tile complexes and then to generate the different color of this uh, gold nanocluster, like from yellow, orange to red and to near infrared. So these are uh, uh, very interesting properties and we are looking for the fluorescence properties. So clusters, they can be used for the different applications like in human health. And I got the inspiration from my seniors, like Professor Wetton, Professor Sukuda, and Professor Pradeep. And for the, uh, the particular research topic, actually the fundamental studies are more important as compared to the applications. So in the past 10 years, I also working on this field we call a cluster chemistry. So I had two like, research interests. So the first one, is to synthesize this uh, water soluble metanol cluster. So as I mentioned, my target is for the biomedical applications. So, and we want to develop some of the efficient methodology to synthesize this metanol cluster with the size composition service and structure control at the atomic level. And more importantly, we want to understand the synthetic processes and then to develop a more efficient synthetic chemistry. So the second topic we are interested in is the fundamental properties. Because we know for these applications, they always they look at the properties right, of our materials. So but some of these properties are not well understood. So we are interested in to provide some of the molecular level understanding for the properties that are fluorescence and some of these cluster structures and for this atomical precise and water soluble 
meta nanoclusters. So today my talk, I will focus on the first part, the material synthesis. So I will just share some of our results in the past about 10 years on the development of the synthetic chemistry to synthesize this uh, water soluble methanol cluster. And I will, due to the time limits, I will not discuss the properties and also the potential applications, like the biomedical applications. So for the synthesis, so you know the synthesis is very important. And actually the synthesis of methanol cluster is not very difficult. And due to a lot of pioneers that develop a lot of very efficient synthesis methods. So for example, for this very like, famous cluster, AU25 with 18 tile ligands. So yellow is gold and uh, the brown is sulfur. So we can easily synthesize this cluster by adding the gold ions and protecting ligands. For example, in this case, it's hydrophilic tile ligands and the solvent we are using is water and adding the reducing agents. So after we add in a reducing agent, we start to see the continuous color change in these reactors. So you can see uh, from yellow, light yellow, and after that will be from like, light yellow, orange, and brown, and then the reddish brown. So within several minutes, if you open this reactor, and then we can synthesize this very high quality, like this AU25 SR18 clusters. So we can synthesize these clusters. But the next questions we may ask is, so what exactly are happening inside this reactor, right? So this is more like a cooking, right? So we can cook a very nice roti prata, and, but we might not understand what exactly the cooking process is, right? So the questions we ask is, so we know the input, we know the output. So what are the reactions? that involve in the synthesis of these clusters. So this is a very open and common questions for the precise synthetic chemistry, not simply in clusters, but also in other inorganic nanomaterials. So the questions we may ask is, so what are the intermediates or key intermediates towards the formation of these metanol clusters? So can we identify all of this, right? So the second question we may ask is, so we can identify the key intermediates. We can know the reaction dynamics. So can we write down the step-by-step -step reactions so along the synthesis of these particular products? So this is similar as the total synthesis of the organic molecules. So we know the total synthesis of organic molecule, we know all the reactions towards the formation of the final products. So the next, uh, how can we precisely control at the atomic level? But now if you have better understanding, so we maybe we can improve a predictable manner of the composition structure of methanol clusters. So the last string and it's very difficult. I mean, it's very challenging is can we achieve a little bit, might not be a like, similar level as the total synthesis organic molecules or total synthesis of these methanol clusters. So actually the, Total synthesis of these metanol clusters. And again, we got ins inspiration from the success of the total synthesis of organic molecules. So you know the total synthesis has revolutionized the synthesis of organic molecules. So we take this like the uh, important drug, the quinine as an example. So it's a complicated molecules, but we can design, use these two, a very simple precursors, and then we can design more than 20 steps and then to precisely synthesize these particular molecules. And more importantly, so we know all the steps towards the formation of these molecules. So we ask ourselves the questions. So can we do similar? Might, might not meet the same uh, requirements and as a total synthesis organic molecules and to a similar or uh, inorganic nanomaterials or meta nanoclusters. So the key and to understand the synthesis process is to identify the reaction intermediates. So I have learned a lot from my pro pro Professor Wetton and he's a pioneer in his uh, ESMS or mass spectrometry. So it's my group are interested in to use 
like this the real time the max spectrometry or ESI mass and to understand the reaction dynamics or kinetics. So we can identify like, the key reaction intermediates and we can reveal reaction kinetics or dynamics at the atomic level. And then we can understand and unravel some of the reaction pathways for these species. So the material like, clusters and we are synthesized are uh, all in water. So it's, and then they carry the charge. So we do not need to add in the to do not need to charging our species. So actually the platform that we are using, we are simply use this like real-time max spectrometry is very simple. So it's more like you are watching the formation of the final products and through the changes of the molecular formula during the formations. So I can show you in these videos. So this is uh, for the formation of AU25 nanocluster. So this is our precursors. And these peaks are really associated with some of uh, in the precursors, the, mo the molecular formula. So when we initiate the reactions, so we start to see some of the peaks disappear and some of the peaks appear and the products are continue increase. So if we analyze all this max spectrum, so we start to understand the reaction chemistry at the atomic level. So for example, we can identify the intermediates, for example, for this AU25 SR18 nanocluster, so the intermediates towards the formation of this final products. And we can also know the time dependent the abundance of these intermediates. So it's, we can then I write down the step-by-step -step reactions that involve in the synthesis these particular products. And we can also like uh, to identify some of the reactions that involve in the synthesis of these final products. So this is the real-time max spectrometry and together with other like in situ and ex situ the te techniques like the UV based absorption spectrometry. And that can provide some of the basic understanding of this reaction dynamics or identify the reaction intermediates. So I will summarize our fundings in the past 10 years in the next slides. So we have contributed uh, accounts uh, in 2018. And thank you for Professor Sukuda for his kind invitations. So we have discussed the concept of this total synthesis of metallic molecules. So if you want to achieve a little bit of this total synthesis, <coughs> so first we need to develop the efficient synthesis protocol to synthesize <coughs> sorry, our products. And after that, we also need to understand what exactly are these cluster form. So it's, we can use the gold ions, tile ligand, water reducing agents. But we may ask, so what are these uh, gold ions reduced to form gold atoms? So how can gold atoms do aggregate to form small cluster? So how can these small cluster finally to form these the big, uh, big clusters? So this is related to reduction growth process. So similarly, if we can have this small cluster, and we can further grow, use this cluster as a C and then to grow the bigger clusters. So we will ask the same questions. So what will be the C mediated growth? So whether uh, for, if you use AU25 as a C, whether the atoms will be just uh, absorbed on your cluster surface and then to grow bigger and bigger, or whether we have aggregated the growth of this metanol cluster. So if we go further, so we may, synthesize the large nanoparticles. And if we can provide a good understanding all the way from precursors to this intermediate cluster and large cluster, we may provide some of the understanding for the nucleations for these meta nanoparticles. So similar as the organic molecules. So we can also like diversify the properties of these molecules and through uh, modification or functionalization of these particular compounds. So one like, efficient way is the, through the ROE. So we have, for example, we have a metanol cluster, a silver cluster, gold clusters. So we can dope the second metals and as discussed in 
in Professor Skuda, if you dope the second metals, you may have a better, uh, you may adjust the electronic structure. So you may have a uh, better performance, particularly in the catalytic applications. So but the questions we may ask is, so what are these are low processes? So whether you have a second metal you dope in this position or this position or in the center of these nanoclusters, at least you are related to the alloy chemistry. So similar as like the metal core, so and for the cluster, the equally important is the ligand of on the surface of this cluster, because this is a very important, particularly for the biomedical applications. So it's, we need to functionalize our cluster with the biocompatible ligands. So one of the way for this functionalization is through the legal exchange or the surface modifications. So we may see the same questions. So what will be, if you have two type of ligands on the cluster surface, so what will be the ligand landscape of these two type of ligands? So this is related to the surface engineering. But last but not the least, so we may also like, like you several assemble our cluster and then to form the super crystals. So there are a lot of the pioneers that are working on the several assemble of this metanol class to form the super crystals and trying to resolve the structure of this metanol cluster. So this is a very powerful technique. <coughs> but my, my focus is different. So it's for a water soluble metanol cluster. Our focus is to trying to understand so some of these several assembly processes. So whether we can use the uh, several assembly processes, for example, to control like the different structure of these super crystals, like the size, morphology, and the structure of these super crystals. Because if they have the different like, morphology or different structures, so they may have the different properties, and this is related to metal materials. So these are the summary of our research, and by using the real time, the, the max spectrometry ESMS, and together with the optical uh, uh, UV uh, uh, absorption spectrometry, and supported by the theoretical studies. So, today, in the rest of my time, I will share three uh, examples. And by using this particular cluster and as the precursors, and to generate their the, through the derivatization chemistry, and then to generate a uh, library of the clusters. So this is another account we contribute uh, re re recently. So we propose for the clusters, like we can use a particular cluster similar as organic molecules, and we can design a derivatization chemistry, and we can uh, establish a library of the clusters. So for example, we have 20 go 25 SR 18 nano clusters. So it's through isomerization processes. So we can generate an isomer by I have the same molecular formula, but I have a different structures. So similarly, if you have these clusters, so through these legal addition reactions, so we can have the cluster have the 25 go atoms, but 19 entirely ligands. And we are also discussing a cluster and through the redox reactions, so what will be the fate of the stability of this AU25 SR18? So of course you have an RO reaction to form to synthesize the cluster with a different composition. We can also several assemble this cluster to build like this like super molecules. So we'll discuss three examples. <clears throat> so the first example is this isomerization reaction. So this is the collaboration with the professor Hanno Hakkinen. So he helped us to do all the simulations in this work. It's a very interesting observations for this uh, very common cluster, AU25 SR18 uh, nanoclusters and protected by, by PMBA ligands. So for this particular cluster, so normally it shows is the red in solution. And by if we include some of the surfactants like the CTAB, Right. So the polar group of these surfactants. So we have a strong interactions with our PMBA ligands. So then they can rectify the surface of this the PMBA protected AU25 nanoclusters. And through this, this 
rigid surface absorption layer and the structure of this cluster, the core of the structure of this cluster will change and then to form this uh, green uh, AU25 nanoclusters. And this process is reversible. And if you remove uh, CTA ligands from the cluster surface, so we can relax the surface of this by uh, AU25, and this green AU25 will go back to this red AU25. So we have identified this reversible isomerization and then obtain a reaction kinetics. So we have like this regular red AU25, and if you add in a CTA in uh, water, and then over the time, it will form this green AU25. And you will remove the CTA from the surface. And uh, after some time, it will go back to AU25. And this is a reversible process. So you can do several cycles to form this red AU25 to form a green AU25. And this process is a first order reaction. And we didn't observe any of these intermediates. And through the uh, simulations, we found out for these clusters, so actually there are no breakage of any chemical bonds. So it's just the reorganization of the core of these AU25 nanoclusters. So the second derivation chemistry we discuss is these etching reactions. So this is like a very like open questions we often ask, especially if you're working on like the applications of these clusters is the stability of the cluster, for example, in water. And in this case, is the stability of this cluster in water and in the presence of the excess tyrolate ligands, because the stability is very important in related to the potential applications. So for this action, the common like salts is, is, is a reverse process as the growth of the cluster. So if a grosser cluster is a bottom up process. So from a small like cluster, it will form to the big clusters for etching. And the common thinking is it will top down. So you have the big cluster like AU25 and then the size will become smaller and smaller. So we will ask ourselves, so whether this is the only pathway for the etching of this AU25 SR18 nanocluster in the presence of these excess tyler ligands. So we have monitored using the max spectral ESI mass to monitor the reactions over the 30 days. So we identify all these intermediates and from day one, uh, zero minutes. So this just shows our metanol cluster at AU25, SR18. And then we identify, obtain all the max spectral for our like reactions. And we identify about 20 of these intermediates and left future with uh, six free electrons, four, two, and zero free electrons. So it's a very busy slide. So I will just bring the information in here. So if we can then plot the time abundance of these intermediates and towards our reaction times. And after that, we can analyze this uh, the history of these intermediates. And we observe two stages for the acting of this AU25 SR18 nanoclusters. So the first stage one is very common one, is a decomposition. So we have this AU25 have A3 electrons. So due to the oxidation, so they start to decompose to form like AU20, for example, AU18, AU15, they have six free electrons, four or two free electrons. And this is the, like the reverse process of the growth of methanol cluster. But interestingly, we also observe this, we call a recombination processes or this isoelectric addition processes during the action of these gold nano clusters. So over the time, so we see like for the six free electron clusters, so we start to see the sign of the cluster, actually the size increase, but they still have the six free electrons, that is four free electrons at AU18. So they form this AU22 or SR18. So they continue increase and due to the consumption of these particular products. So through this like, monitoring, 
by using the ESMS, at length we can understand that uh, there are two stages involved in the action of this AU25, not simply the size down, but also have the size up processes. So the last example, I will discuss is uh, this ligand addition reactions or ligand removal reactions. So again, it's from AU25, SR18, they are A3 electrons. So these clusters can be continuously oxidized and then to form seven electron, three electron, and they form six free electrons. And if they have tire ligands in the solutions, so you find all these tire ligands, they get react with six free electron cluster, and then you form this AU25, SI, SR19, with six free electrons. And again, this process is reversible. So we can, if you adding a reducing agent, like this the very mild reducing agent, CO, carbon monoxide, so this free, six free electron cluster can go back to A free electron clusters. So we have demonstrated in this uh, slides. So I have 25 SR18 and our precursors and, and final products is AU25 SR19. So they have the, the same gold atom number, but the difference, the tiny ligands. So their optical properties are totally different. So this process is a reversible process. So if you have this cluster and in the air 24 hour, and it will be go back to AU25 five XR19. So if you pump in the CO and change the pH, and you will go back to SR18 lens, you can have the different cycles. And we can observe the optical absorption properties and also the ESMS you will see is the cluster to cluster conversions. And finally to form this particular product. So this, I think I don't have time now. So this, presentation and just share some of our thoughts in this the derivatization chemistry of the gold nanocluster. So this is just one example by uh, using AU25 nanocluster as a precursor and through the different derivatization chemistry. And then we can build a library of the derivatives, some maybe totally different properties and compared to these precursors. So with this, I would like to end my presentation by, by thanking my group and the funding support and my the collaborator, Professor Deren Jiang, Professor Peng Zhang, and Professor Hanu Hakinen, and all the funding support. And most important in these slides. So it's welcome to Singapore. So after like, the COVID, the measurements, and I will always welcome you in Singapore. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Beautiful talk. Much. If I may ask a question, Reggie. Uh, so, what is uh, what's happening there? Is it? Uh, can I ask a question now? Yes, Reggie sir. is not there. Yeah, I'm yes, sorry. Sir. Yeah. Um, Kenping, um, yeah. beautiful, and you know you you browse through many interesting things. Uh, let me ask you one question. When you talk about mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, of total synthesis and all that very interesting work. Mm -hmm. uh, you use reagents, uh, re uh, reducing agents. And now there are there is, let us say, a sequence of steps wherein there are a number of intermediates and things like that. But depending on the type of the reducing agent used, Mm -hmm. the intermediates could be different leading to the same cluster. So my question is that, are there a number of possible channels of intermediates leading to the same cluster? And as a result, I mean, this one can easily digest this kind of a thought because depending upon the reductibility of a reducing agent, mm -hmm the speed at which or the rate at which a particular species gets formed is different. Yes, yes. Did yes. you I, pursue that direction to identify different mechanisms for the same cluster? That's a very good question. Thank you, 
Professor Pradeep. So actually we have like conducted like two reducing agents. So one is the sodium borohydride, another one is the carbon monoxide. So actually they are uh, formation processes are not exactly the same, but they are quite similar. And in terms of like the key intermediates, so we have observed like, for example, for the sodium borohydride reduction process or the CO, re CO reduction processes. So they first, they will form these like two electron clusters. So the key like two electron clusters are AU15 and SR13. And then they have formed these four electron clusters, like AU18 and SR13. And then after that, we will form the final products is AU25, SR18. So of course the, the processes and the details of this process, for example, the reduction processes are totally different. And I, 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 I've seen for these two particular systems, like sodium borohydride and CO, so the formation processes, they have some analogy. So it's from two free electrons, four and six to eight free electrons. And, and that, that is like the observations we, we have now. So we are not very clear for like some of the reducing agent, for example, in uh, organic solvents, cause like, that may be quite difficult to, to monitor the reaction processes if like for the hydrophobic methanol cluster, if like for the hydrophilic cause they carry the charge. So you do not need to add in the charge. So it's, we can directly to, to monitor the clusters. There should be more questions. So let us move on. Uh, there, I see Tuxukuda there, yeah. Hello, sir. There is Tuxukuda. Uh, can I continue? Yeah. Hello, sir. I have a question, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I'm audible. Uh, quickly, quickly. Okay, yeah, okay, sir. Sir, can we say which metal will be more efficient for preparing this aggregation induced emission type luminescent metal nanoclusters? Is it possible? Which metal is more efficient? So it 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 it, it depends on like the luminescence like properties we are looking for. And now, if you are work, you are you are using it for like the biomedical applications, and gold could be a, a good choice because it has a good biocompatibility. And if you would like to search for some of like the near RR the emissions, and you may use the different the metal elements. So it's, it's it's a very difficult question. So you don't know which like metals they they. they, they they may have uh, the higher chances for uh, aggregation induced emission. Yeah. Professor Sukuda, then, yeah, I suppose I, I'm just uh, intervening just to save some time. But thank you. Okay. So, very quick question. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, you. you monitor the cluster growth process by ESI under hydrogen rich condition. So, my question is Did you observe? some hydride or hydrogen containing clusters as an intermediate of the growth? It's like for, for the hydride, if you use the sodium borohydride mm. as the reducing agent. So yes, yes. If, if you want to monitor the reaction processes, actually you use a very low concentration of this sodium borohydride. So mm -hmm. it's called a stoichiometry synthesis. So if, if you use like gold uh, is one, and then the sodium borohydride is like one over 320. So it's very, very mm -hmm. low concentration. So in this very mm -hmm. low concentration, actually we didn't observe like the hydride uh, bonding with, with, mm -hmm. with gold, but if you use a very high concentration, like definitely they may have the hydride to bond to the gold yes. surface. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay, thank you, Professor Jianping, for your informative talk on uh, metallic, metallic clusters. As a token of our love and gratitude, we have a small moment for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I stop share, sharing. Yeah. Thank you.